What's up everybody, it's Aaron Engineered and I am here today with my brand new to me Dell R620 PowerEdge server. So today what we're going to do is we're going to get it ready for our Type 1 hypervisor. So basically get it out of the box, get it nice and configured so that you can put whatever operating system you want on it. And I'll give you a little backstory as to how a networking guy ended up with a server in the first place. Well, let's go. What am I doing with a PowerEdge R620 that I bought off of eBay? Well, my current server isn't really cutting the mustard anymore. It's running out of memory, it's running out of processor, so I had to get something a little bit more beefy. Now, storage isn't really a big concern of mine, so I haven't considered that in this build here. As you can see, it's only got the four bays, and each one of these has a 600 gig hard drive in it, but that still almost quadruples the storage space that I have now. What I was really most concerned with, and I'll pop this open so you guys can see it side here, what I was really most concerned with is the processor and the RAM because I'm going to be running some pretty in RAM intensive programs on here. So what you're looking at here is the Dell R620, it's a 16 core server, it's got two ES2660 clocked at 2.2 gigahertz. Uh, and the, the real kicker here is that it's got 96 gigs of RAM. So this thing should be able to take on whatever I throw at it. So what exactly am I gonna throw at it? Well, for right now, I'm gonna take all of the VMs that I currently have running, and I'm gonna put them on here. That should only take up a small little space. Additionally, I'm gonna add a few more things. I've always wanted to put GNS3 and EVNG on a VM. I just never had the horsepower to do it. So this is gonna allow me to get that set up up and running so that I can take all the compute for those two programs off of my main computer and put it on here. But when you get this thing first out of the box, there's a couple of things that we have to do to configure it. And I'm gonna show you how to do that today. So if you're anything like me and you pull it straight out of the box, just like it is here, the first thing you're gonna have to do is slide in the power supply or two if you have them. And then we're gonna turn this thing on and let it get fired up. It's gonna sound like an airplane taking off, but it's cool, just deal with it for a minute. Um, it doesn't sound like that all the time unless it starts to overheating. And then you'll actually know you have a problem because it's gonna sound like an airplane taking off all the time. So all the servers that you can buy, you can plug into using your keyboard, your video, and your mouse. One small problem though, I don't have a VGA cable and I don't wanna wait for one to show up off of Amazon. And really, I just don't wanna buy one because I don't need one. There's another option. That other option, the iDRAC 7 port that was included with my server that's on the back here. So let me show you that. So what you're seeing right here is the iDRAC port. It's just a network port all by itself over here. Um, this is the actual NIC card. You can see there's four one gigabit ports in this particular server. Uh, the monitor port that I mentioned, which I don't have a cable for, and then this little guy over here. So this is super cool because what it's gonna do is it's gonna help a guy like me actually get this thing configured without having to dig up an old VGA cable from somewhere. So let's turn this thing on and plug that in and we'll go through the steps so you can see what it looks like. All right, let's fire this bad boy up. Now I'm gonna take this cable from my switch and go directly into that iDRAC port that we looked at on the back. So I just turned on the power button and listen to this baby purr. It has this little LCD here that you can see what it's doing. So it says system booting right now. Um, but once it gets online, this is gonna be where we're gonna actually configure it to get an IP address from my DHCP server. It's from there that we'll be able to log into it remotely and configure it without the VGA cable like we talked about earlier. Okay, looking at the front screen here, um, this is the name of the device here. I didn't configure that yet. This is fresh out the box, like I said. Um, there's a right arrow key, a left arrow key, and a check mark. So if we just hit the check mark, we get these two options here, setup and view. Clearly, 
I'm gonna wanna go to setup, hit the check box. There we go, iDRAC, that's exactly what we're looking for. Check mark there, security notice, we don't care. All right, DHCP or static IP? Ultimately, I'm gonna recommend that we make this a static IP, um, but for right now, we just want it to get a DHCP IP uh, so that we don't have to type it in using these tiny little buttons and this screen here. So let's do that. Let's hit the check mark, hit save, yes. Okay, back on the home screen, we can see that we have the name again, just like we saw earlier. And if we hit the check mark, we have the home button set up in view. This time I'm gonna go to view, hit the check mark, and we're gonna look to see what the DHCP IP address that the iDRAC got from my DHCP server. So we're gonna hit check mark here, IPv4, IP, and boom, there it is, 192.168.0.184. Now, if you can't remember that off the top of your head, you might wanna write it down uh, in your case so that you can log into that remotely. And I'll show you how to do that right now. But before we can just skip back out of this. Now that we've got this thing plugged in, it's got an IP address, we can now navigate to the IP address that we saw on here, which if you remember, was 192.168.0.184. So all we have to do is open up a browser, Navigate to 192.168.0.184. Hit enter. It's going to give us a nice little, your connection is not private. We know that it is, and so we're going to go to that anyway. All right, so here we have it. Worked like a charm. I guess we're done here. No, not really. So now that we are in the iDRAC7 controller, we have to log in using the default username and password since this thing is fresh out the box, right? So the username is going to be root, the password is Calvin, C-A-L-V-I-N, all lowercase. Hit submit. Gives us a nice friendly reminder here to change the default password. For right now, I'm gonna keep it just for the sake of time um, and I'll go back and change it later. Wait for this guy to load. Okay, so kind of information overload here, right? We've got a bunch of cool stuff on the left. Um, settings, overview, uh, some of the alerts, troubleshooting, licenses, things like that. Um, from the main homepage though, what's really cool is it gives you a little health check of all your devices that run the server here. Um, and you can also see that I can power on and off from here. And this is interesting because you can actually access the iDRAC if you have this thing powered down. So as long as the power supply is plugged in, you'll be able to remote into this, which is a really cool feature. Um, you can see some of the BIOS versions, so I'm nice and up to date there, firmware version, things like that. Sometimes what you'll have to do is you'll have to go in here and make sure that all of your drivers are up to date. In my case, they are so I don't have to upgrade anything, but all those drivers can be easily found on the Dell website. One thing I wanna draw your attention to here is where I'm going to be working from, which is the virtual console. So I'm gonna hit launch right here. It's gonna say, do you wanna keep this file? Yes, I do. Um, and all this is a little Java window that's gonna pop up so that we can access this. Continue, run. Yes, I'm okay with that. All right, this would be the exact same screen you would see if you were actually plugged into this. So although we did get into this kind of through a back door, um, not the traditional route by plugging in the monitor like our other option was, we're still getting the exact same screen, which is really cool. So it's giving me all the options, uh, select F1 to re retry boot, F2 for system setup, F11 for BIOS boot manager. And this thing's just gonna keep cycling um, if we don't do anything. So basically we gotta tell it to do something. As of right now, I have all of the hard drives installed in all their bays, but they are not formatted. So where we're gonna go from here is formatting these drives into a virtual disk so that we can install the operating system of choice for us. In my case, it's gonna be VMware ESXi, like I mentioned earlier, 
um, but this could be Proxmox or any other sort of open source free software that you want to try out. Um, and you could even try multiples if you split these up into different partitions. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go with one. So we're going to create one giant virtual disk out of all my hard drives. Okay, so as it's booting up here, it's going to give us a couple of different options. There's going to be a control S, as you can see there, for the configuration menu, or control R, which is going to be the next option, which is what we're going to do. So control R, now you can see all four of the drives that I have in there, they're actually 600 gigs, but showing us 558. And since I have four of them, I have chosen that I'm going to do a RAID 5 which would be the minimum requirement for RAID 5, just so that if one of them goes bad, I won't be SOL. So in order to do that, see I use my arrow keys here, and what we're gonna do is click the no configuration present section, and it's defaulted to RAID 0, and down here, none of the disks are checked. So you could check all of these, which I'm gonna do, or you could leave some of them out if you planned on creating a separate partition. What I'm gonna do is click this here, go down to the RAID 5, like I'd chosen earlier, and I'm gonna select the disks to put in the RAID 5. So this one, this one, this one, and lastly, this one. Then scroll over to OK, hit OK. Recommended that all newly created logical drives be initialized. I am okay with that. Under the newly created virtual disks that we have here, uh, we're gonna select that and hit F2. Here's where we'll need to initialize the disks. So we're gonna hit start init, and it gives a nice little warning here. It's gonna destroy all the data on the disk. Are you okay? Yes, I do want to do that. And we're gonna hit yes to that. Now you see the progress here. I'm gonna fast forward through this, but it might take a while. So. We'll be back when it's done. Oh my God, that took forever. <laughs> I can't believe it. Uh, it was well over an hour. Um, that's okay though, we're good to go. We've got the virtual disk zero up and running. As you can see on the screen, I've got a nice little OK prompt that I'm gonna hit OK to. And that should just about complete the setup here. So I'm gonna escape out of this, hit OK, go up here to the macros, do a control alt delete, and it's gonna reboot. At this point, it's not going to do a whole lot because I don't have the operating system installed, so really it has nowhere to go, but in order to get an operating system to install on the server, we first had to create a virtual disk, and that's what we've done here. Like I mentioned before, I'm going to be using this server to do a lot of cool stuff, virtualizing my network environment, um, creating a Plex server to house all my Blu-rays and DVDs and things like that. Um, and then really just some general Linux computing. But if you have any suggestions of things that you want me to do or anything that you think would be cool for me to try out, just leave me a comment, hit the like button, find me on Twitter and Instagram, at Aaron Engineered, drop me a line, even just to say hi. I hope this video was helpful for anybody that's just getting started with the Dell PowerEdge. See ya!